How is it going everybody? I am here in Destiny 2 and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to unlock the Mita multi-tool from the first quest until you unlock the Mita multi-tool. Something that I'm going to remind you guys to do while you are playing is stock up on some blue or above um, scout rifles because you're going to want to keep those in your vault for later in the quest. So after beating the main story of Destiny 2 and all missions that are left on EDZ, you're going to get a quest line that's going to start on the EDZ called Enhance. And so you're just going to go ahead and you're going to continue to do these quests until you get... Uh, the Mita Mini Tool from Devrim K. So this quest line is actually going to be uh, trying to figure out what these Fallen are doing to make themselves uh, Empyrean. Empyrean Vandals and uh, Empyrean Fallen. So the first quest line is going to have you uh, try to figure out what exactly is going on and you just have to kill five Empyrean van or Empyrean Fallen you have to find them around the EDZ they they spawn in with other groups of Fallen in the area around the the church tower so as you can see if you find a glowing Vandal or any glowing fallen, that is what you're going to kill to pick up all these anomalous ether samples. So once you complete this first quest uh, by fighting your way through one of the lost sectors in the EDZ and the Trosslands, you're going to head back to Devrim K at the top of the church tower and he will give you the next portion of the quest. So for him, you're going to go talk to him. And he will give you the next portion of the quest. Once you're done talking to him, if you head towards... Um, let me check the map. If you head towards uh, Mavic Square, you'll find the next step of the quest, Differential Diagnosis. So once you start this quest, you're going to head towards Mavic Square, and there'll be these barriers that you're going to have to get around again. Uh, it was the same as the previous quest. Um, the only way to do it is to... Yeah, you have to fight this guy here and you should get a key code for that gate. So once you get it, you head right back to it and you will plant the explosive on the actual barrier, um, like source or whatever, just back up, and you should be able to shoot it, and it'll blow up and deactivate the barrier, and you just head forward. So you're gonna keep moving forward, and you're gonna keep uh, investigating each barrier until you get to the end. Once you're done heading through all the shields that they have, the barriers, and then also you'll teleport someplace and you'll head through one more and then you'll end up back at the uh, church tower where Devrim K is in the Trostlands and you're going to head to another fallen uh, lost sector and same thing as before, you're going to go ahead and you're going to kill everybody in this area and you're going to keep Keep fighting until you finally beat the mission, and then it should activate the next quest. So once you've secured that area, you're going to head out of the Lost Sector, because the next quest will have unlocked, and it is in the Trossland again. So I'm going to head back out there, and you'll see that it has spawned in right over there. And I've just beat this uh, last mission. 
So you just start the mission. And then this one will be in the mines, so we're just going to head down there. So once you get into the mine, you'll find an Archon Priest. And so pretty much all we're going to do is defeat this Archon Priest. And then it should give you the option to destroy all of the uh, ether like things up there in that room. As I was saying, once you kill the Archon Priest, these doors in this room shall unlock... Uh, here in a second. And if you just back up, give them a few shots, you'll notice that all of these blow up. And so, this will activate the next quest, which should be the last one, I believe. So you're actually going to head back to Devron's Tower, and we're going to entice the Servitor. So, this is the last part of the quest. We're going to pull out the Servitor that's been... Uh, getting all of this ether that they've been, um, like, altering. So, uh, if you go out here by Devrim's Tower, right next to uh, the tower on this side, there's a thing that you can activate, which I already did. But here in a moment, it should... Jeez, I miss every shot. Here in a moment, it should activate uh, Servitor after you kill a few fallen enemies. So, here's the Servitor spawned in. And you're just going to go ahead and you're going to follow this thing until you eventually beat the quest. It does run really far away you're gonna head quite a bit off uh, across the map and you're just gonna keep following it all the way around and this is the longest part of the quest in my opinion um, there are some harder parts if you're playing warlock like me um, later on there's some parts that will be easier for warlocks but harder for everyone else in my opinion but it's nothing impossible as other characters or other classes. And once you kill the servitor, the mission's complete and you'll have to go back to Devrim and the Trostland. So if you just fast travel to him, he will give you the Mida mini tool to do the next portion with. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use the Mida mini tool, but it, it is it is a good submachine gun to use if you are going to do this part. Um, this next port can be pretty easy. Um, but if you just talk to Devrim, He gives you the Mida mini tool. My Mida mini tool is going to be 299, which is pretty cool. Um, and then after you have unlocked the Mida mini tool, it is something you can actually buy from him at any point, which is um, really cool. So once you've received the Mida mini tool from Devrim K, you're going to go ahead and go back to the tower uh, to collect the quest for the Mida multi tool. And after you arrive at the tower, you're going to accept this quest from Banshee44, the gunsmith. He's going to have this quest for you, which is eliminate enemies with precision shots and eliminate multiple enemies without reloading. And you must complete the objectives with a scout rifle. So you're going to want to get your best scout rifle, which I have a better one uh, in my inventory than what I have equipped. So we'll equip this 292 scout rifle for now. And we're going to go kill us some enemies. What I'd suggest is just go in some place where a lot of enemies spawn. And if a tip that I have for this part is to actually just try to get at least three kills before reloading. Even if you don't land headshots on every single kill. I mean, of course, try to land headshots on as many kills as you can. Uh, but it's not really going to be the end of the world. As long as you get three kills on one clip. So right there was one, that was two, that was three. And you'll notice that 
or I noticed that this has gone up by one now, and so I can reload. But I'll show you if I got one kill, two kills, it was just 11, and it's still 11. So, what I've figured out that I need to do is go ahead and get another kill. There was four just for sure. And you see it's gone up to 12. So you can go ahead and reload after that and continue on. Shanks are easy kills for that portion. Um, and as long as you land headshots on dregs or uh, wretches, they're also easy kills. So that was my third kill. And it's gone up to 13. So once you have completed all of the objectives with the scout rifle you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go turn that into Banshee 44 to get the next step of the quest so the next step for the quest is called under the hood so what you're gonna wanna do is dismantle five valuable scout rifles which is either rare or legendary so what you can do is like I was saying earlier, stock up on scout rifles early in the game. Because when you start getting blues and stuff, you're going to see quite a few of them. So as you can see right here, I've got quite a few scout rifles. i got four blues, and then I've got a couple purples in here and on me. So I'll pick up all these purples and all these blues. So if I go in here, I can dismantle all of these scout rifles and it should end the quest so now I need to talk to Banshee 44 again and I'll get one of the last portions of the quest which is the fall will kill you so this you have to get 50 airborne SMG kills. Earlier, if you're playing Warlock, get Wings of Sacred Dawn and use it with Dawnblade and you can uh, float in air while having this chest plate. And then as long as you have an SMG, that's good, which I've got Mida Mini Tool, which you get from the quest, and I've also got Risk Runner. As long as you have one of these SMGs that are good. I've got Mob Justice from the raid as well. You can mow through this part very easily. So once you have actually gotten all 50 airborne kills with SMGs, you're going to go ahead and travel back to the tower. And you're going to want to turn that into Banshee 44. When you return to the tower, you're going to go to the gunsmith. And you will speak to him and he will give you a Mida multi-tool. So depending on what your light level actually is, my current light level, I've put all my highest gear on here, is at 302. So he's giving me a Mida multi-tool that is 305. And yeah, it is a really good gun. So the Mida is really useful in both PvE and PvP. It's really good in Crucible, in my opinion, just for the fact that it has um, the ability to keep your radar active while aiming down sights, which is super useful. Um, it has a hand laid stock, which increases its ability, high caliber rounds, which slightly inc increases range and knocks the target back farther, and a balanced barrel, which slightly inc increases range and stability and increases handling speed. And the main perk for this exotic, the exotic perk, is that the weapon boosts your speed. So as long as you have this weapon equipped, you will actually move faster than you would regularly uh, with any other gun. So it's a really, really good gun. I would highly suggest it uh, for anyone trying to do Crucible. It seems like a very popular gun in Trials of the Nine, uh, obviously because of the radar. It's very useful, along with um, The Last Hope or Rat King. Those are probably some of the bigger ones. But, yeah, it's a 
really good gun, and I would highly suggest it to anybody that is attempting to uh, do trials or are really into this game uh, in any way. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this little tutorial on how to unlock the Mita, and let me know if there's any other things that I can help you guys understand in this game. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.